<clears throat> really, the the, uh, the better question to ask is not what's wrong with you. What is what's not wrong with you? <laughs> oh my God! Hello, 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 hello. Now. Hmm. I wonder if Saunders is live tonight. I should probably look. I don't want to step on his toes. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. Let's look. Saunders is not live tonight. Oh, my God. What's going on? <clears throat> he didn't have enough uh, energy to get up and wave his penis at us. <gasps> Ah, uh, anyway, <clears throat> since there's no one here, we can geek out for a minute. Do you see the uh, see the T-shirt there? <laughs> Skeleton is here. Good morning, hello, sir. How are you? <clears throat> Down in the islands, so you're gonna you're gonna miss the big eclipse probably, or most of it anyway. Now, hey, the uh, <clears throat> total solar eclipse. Goes through St. Well, just about through St. Louis. Just about. Bolska Bob, hello. <laughs> what Bolska? What are you live? <clears throat> oh, you're well, you're up anyway, probably having some cocktails. Hello. Welcome, sir. You gonna drive down to St. Louis for the big eclipse? You're gonna see that end of the world. The X marks the spot. <laughs> I think it's Carbondale, Illinois where the eclipse came through in 2017, and it's going through the exact same spot. Give me an hour, I'll join you. Okay, well, I'll be here for a little bit. I got some brewskis. Anyway, let's see. Can I make this bigger? And then, no. Oh, you can see it on the screen though, right? Michelle Guevara. Michelle from Paris. So you guys get the you you guys get the joke unless you're <laughs> yeah. uh, now <clears throat> Tom Laundry is here. Hello. If you're uh, a geek, you'll you'll get this joke. If you're an electrical geek, you'll get <laughs> you get it. Oh God. Okay. Do I have to explain it? <clears throat> okay. That's an OR gate. Right? This is an inverter. And so the t shirt says simply to be or not, or not to be. I know. It's geek shit. <laughs> oh, God. Why are you loud? You're, you're a weirdo hamster. My God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right. Share this tab instead. Okay. I'll share this one. See if it actually works. Okay. See, I don't want that. Men are punching women in the face. Men oh, no. are constantly assaulting people. And now let's make this statement correct. Um, Some hmm. men are doing that. Yeah. Some. Yeah. This world that we live in, an unsafe, uncivilized place because of them. And I For some odd reason, they keep leaving out that very crucial word, some. Well, they have to, because uh, otherwise their bullshit falls apart. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> I've seen this this woman around uh, quite a bit, actually, lately. And her channel is V underscore Lady underscore J. So if you want to look her up, go ahead. She's got a very smoky voice. Sounds like a radio voice to me. Oh, my God. I don't care if people say it's controversial. I don't care. I don't care. Honestly, I think that we should restrict and monitor the movement of men. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that tragedy in, in uh, England a few years ago where this poor woman was kidnapped and, well, done, done dirty by this, this cop. And the uh, fanbots were out on the street. Oh, my God. We got to restrict the way men. They're all evil. Oh, my God. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, advocating for restricting the movement of half of the world's entire population. Yes, yes. That's what we need to do, Lady J. Because of the actions of some. Mm -hmm. How logical. 
I mean, that's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. Yeah. You men's need to stay in your house. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, the men that are homeless, you don't need to stay in your house because you don't have one. Oh, my God. Oh, hello to uh, our overseas friends down in Australia. And my, my good friend, Lizzie Bell Hobson. Good morning. <laughs> what is it? Uh, 9 a.m., 8 a.m. over in uh, England. So sweet. Have a good day. All right, guys. I feel like if you're a man and you want to leave your house, you should have to apply for a permit. You should have to state your business, where you're going. Uh, um, yeah. yeah what time sure. you're coming back, everything. Right, right, right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because the world must change around the female. Because, you know, and shit. <laughs> I'm not sure I have enough coffee for this. I think I have enough beer for it, though. So let's hang in there together, what sweetie. You you can't exist in society. You, oh, my you God. You don't know how to. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a bunch of evil man. That's what you are. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get to the eclipse here shortly. You know, it's the end of the world. You know, X is... It's it's all going to end Monday or 40 days after Monday, depending on who you listen to. We might get a 40 day reprieve from Jesus Christ. We'll see. It's awful. It's awful for us to exist with you, just so you know. Mm. Yeah, for those that actually agree with those sentiments, yeah. take something into consideration for a moment. Yes. Just imagine if we started treating every individual demographic in the same way in which some now of the minority. I might be crazy here. Members of each how do they, how do people get these teeth that are so fucking white? It's al it's almost blinding. I mean, good for her. I mean, she's got great teeth. Those specific yeah. groups behave. Look how white they are. I mean, is there some shit you can get put on your teeth? I, I don't. <laughs> my, I mean, my my teeth just keep getting darker and more brownish looking. Even though I quit smoking, pretty much quit drinking coffee. I don't drink wine. It couldn't be the beer. <laughs> no, come on now. The world be then. Yeah. Oh, okay, we'll do some more. Let's see what else she has here. Let's see. Marriage investment. Okay, good. Here we go. Oh. That's a universal sign of leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Oh, kitties are so cute, though. Except the ones that'll eat you. Yeah, I don't like those. Leave me alone. <clears throat> I mean, that's a fair warning, you know. I mean, the, kid, the, the, the kitty cat here is saying, just get the fuck away. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, sure. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, on your, I'm on your side. Yep. I'm sorry. Did I hear some cock? I think I, I think I heard some cock. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kitty, so cute though. Look at it purring. Would you give the give the cat some freaking catnip for God's sake? It's Friday night. One of the influencers who's got half a million followers on social media just got engaged, and this is her ring. Okay. And what do you think? What do I think? I, uh, I'm surprised anybody's getting married these days, to be honest. But uh, go ahead. Because we're about to hear someone's opinion on that. Goody. Here's the goody. truth: an engagement ring must hurt a man financially to prove that he has long-term intention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's good. It must hurt you to prove your long-term investment. Master Yoda. There is no try and there is no do and try. <laughs> do or do not. <laughs> good to see you, Yoda. All right, let's go back to this uh this uh well. <laughs> 
watch it. So let's listen to it. Prove that he has long term intention. Oh, it's fun to be right. The real truth. Financially, to prove that he has long term intention. An engagement ring must hurt a man financially to prove that he has long term intention. I mean, that's that's how stupid these women are, or some <clears throat> some. It's like, yeah, spend forty thousand dollars on an engagement ring, or you know what? We could use that as a down payment on a fucking house. What do you think? Hmm. Oh, I want the engagement ring. It has to hurt you. Why would you want to hurt the <laughs> just <sighs> doesn't make any sense. Doesn't it's make any right. sense. Yeah. The real truth is that is the very definition of just an opinion. Just like everything in life, financial investment equals to mental commitment. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the Asian women, guys. <laughs> Not even the Asian <laughs> Oh, God, there's no hope. I think that there are many people out there that might not agree with that. Everybody but needs a ginger uh, ginger English girlfriend is what you need. That's yes. Let's hear this person's opinion why. Is that comparing the fact that you spent $20 on and the one that you spent two grand on? Are we really going to come? Oh, maybe the woman is fucking around. She's saying, hey, this is stupid. Okay. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Investing in a relationship by virtue of buying an expensive engagement ring or uh, a woman buying a handbag. Ooh. I guess so. Do you care if the $20 bag gets scratched, get wet? No, you don't. But do you care if the Chanel bag gets dirty and would you replace it so easily? No, you won't. Uh, no, I wouldn't buy one in the first place because I'm not a fucking stupid idiot. <laughs> Functionality over fucking name brand tags. Who gives a shit? You're going to spend thousands of dollars on a bag? Get the fuck out of here. CDP drunk, hello. <clears throat> and here my dick shriveling for anti-cow eating <clears throat> curry broad of Karma Sutra. Clearly not fucking me dead. Great, uh, Mr. Drunk. Good, good. <laughs> I mean, that comment right there made it worth it to me to get out of bed. Because uh, I like it. Because you financial investment in it. Well, it's just me, but I wouldn't spend two grand on a handbag. Fuck. No. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I wouldn't spend $2,000 on anything because I'm a cheap motherfucker. <laughs> Period. The more you invest in something, the more likely you're going to cherish it and uh -huh. think it's broken, not Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Yeah. Place yeah. it. Marriage is the same. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think this uh, lovely little Asian girl is, is is joking. It's a joke. Or if you're in Finland, it's a yoke. It's a yoke. Find that we can chalk up those high divorce rates to people not investing enough money, money. in their marriages. Hmm. Mm -hmm. An engagement ring should be a substantial financial investment for the man. Okay, if I give you a forty thousand dollar ring, then you no no divorce, uh, no divorce ever, huh? <laughs> no. Would agree to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up front to prove his long term intention to a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought determining a person's true intentions was determined on their actions and how they treat yeah. another person. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's so old fashioned, you old woman, you. Don't you know? We're in the modern age. Oh, God, there's another one. Uh, where are all the masculine? Oh. Wait, another dating roach. Go. This belief needs to be deeply ingrained in your head in order for you oh. to get good with women. <laughs> I mean, where can you where can you possibly go at 1.30 in the morning to get this much entertainment for nothing for free? Let's uh, let's listen to this roach again. Because you know, reasons. This belief needs to be deeply ingrained in your head in order for you to get good with women. Of course, the first question would be, uh, <laughs> how would you know anything about that, sir? Okay, well, I mean, let's hear him out. He might have a point. Uh, Wait for it. This is good. I'm a professional dating coach, and I teach guys how to understand the female mind. <laughs> Big Tell Phoenix is here. Hello. Lanny is here too. Anton Laundry, Charzenable. Oh my God, the whole gang is here. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Remember, the, uh, <clears throat> the eclipse on Monday is the end of the world. So uh, 
Might as well enjoy ourselves. Have another beer. What the hell? And Char is in, oh, is in Germany. So they have beer on tap at the McDonald's there and, and stuff. All right. Let's what denounce the roach. Oh my God. Uh, in case you missed it, let's uh let's uh hear what this guy has to say. I mean, clearly you can see he's uh he's uh, slick with the women. You can tell. Look at those manly hands there. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God! This belief needs to be deeply ingrained in your head in mm. order for you to get good with women. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wait for it. This is good. Oh, I'm waiting for it. Oh, baby. I'm a professional dating coach, and I teach guys how to understand the female mind. Excuse me. <laughs> He's a prof. What? What are you? Yeah. You're a professional dating coach. This belief needs to be deeply ingrained in your head in order for you to get good with women. Wait for it. Oh, God. Here's the... Uh, <laughs> it looks like she only puts out shorts, but uh, there's a lot of them there. So feel free. The Lady J with underscores. Give her, a, give, her a, give her some love. I mean, she's all over the internet. She's only got 4,000 subs. So go ahead and sub to her. This is good. Yeah. I'm a professional dating coach and I teach guys how to understand the female mind. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking from personal experience, I happen to have a female mind. And uh, yeah. after everything I've seen on one's page, I really don't think that one should be trying to teach anyone how to understand anything. But let's carry on, shall we? Yeah, because there's nothing like a good roach roast, because that's, that's, that's what we live for here. It is as follows. Now, a lot okay. of you are going to fucking pull back from it. Get, get. <laughs> How to get up to my level. Oh, my God. What the fuck? This is going to be good, isn't it? I mean, a grift is one thing, but this guy, what the? We got to ASMR this here. Okay, Roach. No way you're going to get my numbers in both quantity and quality. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. He's got to be fucking with us, right? He has to be fucking with us. There's no way this guy is a, is a... Well, and again, God only knows these days. If you do not have this belief. Okay. Just be a reminder that for some, delusions are as necessary to their happiness as realities. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, yeah. It is my reality. And mm. she is just a guest. Mm. Is something very important there that's worth repeating. One more time for the people that just got shocked and awed and just, like, I punched them. I, I, I'm falling over, you know. I mean, my beer cans are just falling down. I, I can't believe this massive amount of wisdom that this uh, this dating roach is giving us. Oh, my God. Chase or something. It is my reality. Mm-hmm. No one else. Should be called my fantasy. Uh, I'm a dating roach, and I get all these high-quality women, because, you know, <laughs> and shit. And how much you want to bet he's got a to be or not to be t-shirt at home. Just saying. I think it's a strong possibility. In it. Thanks for playing. Yeah. Oh, that's it? Oh, I was hoping for more in-depth roach roasting. Oh, look, there's a penise. Let's okay. be honest. All uh -huh. of us have wondered from time to time. Oh, my God. Our partners think about our genitals. And if you really want to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, kind of could tell. <clears throat> I, you know. This belief needs to be deep. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. That was. Does she have any more Roach videos? Because this is, this is fun. Is this really a bad? Where are the masculine men? <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Can someone please tell me where the masculine men are out there? Hiding from you. <laughs> yeah, damn. Uh, hamster's on fire tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. I suppose that depends on what one's definition of masculine is. Mm -hmm. Well, I could think of a few things. Tall, good looking, huge dick, six pack abs, money, fancy car, all that kind of shit. No. 
probably. <laughs> uh, oh, God. All right. Go ahead. However, they happen to be everywhere, but a lot of them are hiding. Seems like there's more men nowadays that want to be the woman. Uh, well, she's got a rock and roll hat on. So I suppose that helps. In the relationship. Let's hear it. Where's Easter Sunday? He could, he could pull out his wanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and wang for us. What happened to the chivalrous man? They're far and few between. Modern feminism happened, convincing men mm -hmm. from toxic masculinity. Mm. Women can do everything on their own, so they don't need men to act in a chivalrous manner. You see, and here's what happens, <clears throat> is that when you tell men, I can do all this shit and open my own doors, and we say, oh, okay. Yeah, you could do that, sure. And then they bitch when you don't open their door. It's, you know, you, <clears throat> they wonder why men are just like, what the fuck? Do I really want to deal with this shit? And a lot of men are saying, no, no, I don't. <laughs> Fuck this bullshit. It's too confusing. It's too much work, really. It's too much mental strain. Just to get a piece of uh, used roast beef and cheese with herpes. Nah, I don't think so. If you are them, where do we find you? They've been. We're successfully hiding from you. That's why you can't find us. The whole time. But frankly, a lot of them are avoiding contact with a lot of women. Yeah. They never know which ones are going to yell at them for holding open a door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what, what do you want? Well, I just want what I want. And I want what I want when I want it. And if you don't know that, I'm just not a mind reader. Oh, my God. There's something wrong with you. You're one of those. Oh, my God, evil. It's yeah. like the local Home Depot. I've seen that trend. Like, oh, go find your man at Home Depot. No, <laughs> the guy that's there on a Saturday morning is there because his wife sent him there to get the shit to work on a project. Well, she's she's right about that. <laughs> she's, she's not lying about that, for sure. Okay. Uh -huh. Maybe I can find you at Costco in the meat market. Meat market. Huh? <laughs> I'm not touching that one. Uh, we used to. That's what we used to call going to the, uh, going to the club. Let's go to the meat market and be ignored by all the girls. Yes. Yes. The women. Uh, obviously, it's a freaking bar. But literally, what happens to the masculine men? Where do I find you? Where do women in general find you? Um, well, <clears throat> again, I think uh, Lady J here says it correctly. Uh, what's your definition of a masculine man? Man. Yeah. And when did men become such little dusty boys? All right, rant over. Little dusty boys? Okay. Sure. Must be the newfangled talk from these chicks. I don't know what that means, but uh, we'll do another one. Why not? Here's another makeup one. Here, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here's an easy thing you can do to uh -oh. add to your routine so that you age Goody. better. Or maybe better yet. Mm -hmm. Men should always pay on the first date, and this. I mean, who? I'm sorry. You know, maybe, maybe I'm just. Uh, <clears throat> let me blow that up for you guys here. Maybe I'm just getting old, and I just don't know what you know. I don't know what beautiful women look like anymore. But this would not be one for me. Michael Haloub, hello. Masculine men are smart enough not to be smelly and beta enough for once. Quince, I like that. Yeah, good call. Yeah, let me put that up there. All right, hold on. So I'm looking at this fake plastic Barbie doll here, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no. So that it would not be for me. Okay, you might like that. Yeah, feel free, but no, I don't That's think fine. so. Okay, let's hear why. Spoiler alert, it has mm. to do with how much money they spent on making up their face. Really? Well, if you gotta make up your face like you're building a fucking building. <laughs> oh God, what's wrong with you? There's about to be two grand on my face. So how mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's gonna be $2,000 worth of shit on her face. When in fact she doesn't look much worse here. Much? Oh dear. Now let's see why it costs almost two grand to put on one's face. Uh-huh. And why would you have to do that? Well, 
you know, if I might uh, philosophize on that, a uh, little girly friend here is looking for a certain uh, type of man. You know what I'm saying? He plays basketball. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. She likes a little bit of, uh, well, she likes the tan dudes. That's, I guess, uh, okay. Dior Foundation, $57. I mean, okay. And, and how, how, did, how much did the, uh, how the, <laughs> did you pay someone to punch you in the face to get your lips swollen like that? Or did you go to the plastic surgeon? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I'll give her this. At least she doesn't have the I can't wipe my own ass nails on. That's that's good. Yeah. So maybe she's looking for a not not so melanin. Well, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Girl math, boys. If you're a girl, girl make sure the man pays. Don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like somebody's asshole. <laughs> did you go there? I did go there. It looks like a butthole. Oh, my God. A swollen butthole after some peanut butter. Uh, no. Now that we've seen that, let's take a look at the before and the after. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, clearly she's got the dyed hair, and she can't spend forty to forty what forty dollars on on dye to get the roots there. She wants to be a blonde little slut. Because <laughs> I guess the ball player she's going for likes the blondies. Hey, I'm just saying. No, it's just my opinion, but I actually do believe that most gentlemen would prefer how one looked before spending. I mean, you know, even if you are a ball player. And you like little blonde white girls? Okay. Why? Why would you go for this one? It looks so fake. It's two thousand dollars to a. Uh, it's a Fugazi. <laughs> it's a Fugazi. Apply product to one's face, just no. to try to impress someone mm -mm. on a first date, oh. no less. Yeah. Because it really does speak volumes that someone would spend that amount of money to, just to try to impress someone, and indeed, it says that women really don't do that for themselves. They do that for men. Mm -hmm. Pay on the first date. And this yeah, is pay on the first date. <clears throat> when Tyrone, the ball player, comes in, he doesn't pay for shit. <laughs> oh, God. I swear it's an asshole face. All right, let's go back. All right. Now we'll do one more. What the hell? The dating standard. Oh, goody. If a man can't spend 75 or or $100 on a first date, he just should. Uh huh. Shouldn't be dating a person. <sighs> oh my God, guys! How did we? How did we get here? Oh God! And I mean, I didn't stop this in a particular place. I just stopped it. It's like, hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a man can't spend seventy five yeah. or a hundred dollars on a first date, he just shouldn't be dating. A person shouldn't feel entitled to have a gentleman spend a certain amount of money on them just to prove that they're interested. But I'm sure Wait a minute. She said if a man can't do that, he shouldn't be dating. Uh Roger. Okay. I I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, I won't. How's that? No. <laughs> That's not what you mean. <sighs> Oh my God. Sure there's more to this. If a man wants to take you on a walk or go for coffee on the first date, say no thanks and move on. And listen. Okay. Yeah. Good call. Done. Thing to this type of advice is a good way to be saying in a few years, where are all those good men at? You're a woman and you're not yet 20 or you're in your early 20s right now. You are setting the dating standard. And <laughs> <laughs> oh God Almighty! The, the fucking delusion of these women—it's amazing. 
Oh God. Oh no. Go go ahead. A standard that says that a lot of the women out there that listen to this type of advice mm. are only after a man's money. Uh, Do you think the guy that spends four dollars on you for the first date for a coffee or for a cookie is going to be an overflowing fountain of effort and enthusiasm for you moving? Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you so interested in the cash? I mean, he's cute. He's fun to be around. No, unless he brings out the money. Fuck him. I mean, not fuck him. <laughs> to be or not to be. <laughs> Oh my God! Forward, and who's to say he won't? Actually, it says a lot more about a guy Jesus. who's careful with his money rather than someone who just flings it around hoping to impress someone. But <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I could spend a hundred dollars on a date or invest it and think about the future. I know. I know when you're 20 and you're a female, you have no fucking idea. What do I know? Do you? What do women commonly do to get ready for a first date? Um, show up. Oh, and here comes that argument again. Mm -hmm. New outfit, nails done, hair done, maybe buy some new makeup or perfume or jewelry. Oh, look at that. She's already, um, yeah. She's uh, too far gone. All so right. what that's saying is, I guess some women... She's only in her 20s, too. Early 20s. She's already too far gone. She's had too many miles of... <laughs> Really, only oh, do that for the men, and not for themselves, as men no. would like to have us believe. Wait a minute! I thought women dressed up for other women or men. No, they don't do it for they do it for themselves. So then, why are you complaining? Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. Jesse, it's not about the money. On the first few dates, it is. On every date moving forward, it is. <sighs> Goody. There we have it. The reason why men are walking away from dating. Should we do another one? I mean, we're here. What the hell? All because he wore a dress. Oh, my God. I bet go. you didn't know that Kurt Cobain... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got it. Oh, no. Oh, no. When was that uh, eclipse coming again? Yes, it's Monday. Good, <laughs> good. It's probably trans. Say what now? Mm -hmm. First off, Kurt wore a lot of women's clothing. Wow, really? Now a person might consider to be trans based on the clothes that they occasionally wore. And Kurt Cobain's a trans now. Okay. On top of that, basically reducing women down to a stereotype because only women wear dresses, right? Right. About this, they replied that they wore dresses all the time because they felt comfortable and free. And a lot of women wear pants because they find them comfortable. Is one next going to start telling God, women what a that they're actually argument. trans because they wear clothing that is traditionally associated with men? Mm, yeah, here's the deal, though. Kurt Cobain was a uh, <clears throat> rock and roll uh, star trying to get the uh, views and what. You know, back in the day before we had YouTube and shit, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana were trying to get likes and, and subs, right? When they were, you know, back then. So Kurt would do some weird shit to get his eye, people's eyeballs. Anyway, Shinobi Juan Kenobi, live from New Zealand. Hello, sir. Hope you're, uh, your ducks are well or whatever, your kangaroos, whatever. What are you doing down there nowadays? You got some cassowaries <laughs> what do you oh my god yes 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 i i i, I roast the cassowary just for fun and then i i pick the teeth with his thick egg up with it right good to see you shinobi Wan. that's why i'm here at this time of the morning because i figured you'd be awake you big stud you about their childhood kurt said that they mostly hung out around girls and that at one mm. point they thought they might be gay even if that were the case. It's well, maybe he is gay. Who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, he's gay. Oh, my God. I'm going to burn all my Nirvana albums. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Who gives a shit? Almost as if being gay and being transgender are two completely different things. You see, it's, it's really interesting because, oh, my God, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, he might have been gay. Uh-huh. So, and what? But don't you care? You're a Nazi. You know, all the gay people. I mean, no, I don't. I don't give a shit. 
<laughs> he could be gay as a three dollar bill. I don't care. <laughs> but you're supposed to care because you're an evil nut. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. That's Many it. Many trans people who don't have the vocabulary yet to express their gender identity will describe what they're feeling as being gay. That's exactly what I, I mean. Why does it? Why? Why do they keep bringing this up? Oh my God, you might be. He he might have been gay. Yeah, and. So what? <laughs> Who gives a shit? You're not only gay, you're fucking weird and mentally ill. Is that a problem? In middle school. So that naturally must make it so for everyone else, right? It is also quoted right. as something identified more with the feminine than with the masculine. This is clear. So what? What is the point you are trying to make? <laughs> we would love to know, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we, guys? Yes, gay and masculine, and feminine. Okay, what 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 is your fucking point? Fat dog is here. Hello, fatty. You fat fat fucker. <laughs> did not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. And this is actually evidence in how if a person is so so now now they're saying that Kurt Cobain was a transgender. <laughs> Got it. Looking for something, hoping to prove their own narrative, they'll usually find it. Ugh. The most convincing evidence that Kurt was trans was in an early version of Nirvana's All Apologies lyrics, where Kurt wrote, Let me grow some. <laughs> that is clear cut gender dysphoria. I'm. Damn. I mean, you have to admit, some of these people do have rather vivid imaginations. <laughs> Oh, God. Sorry, where exactly did one get one's degree in psychology or in medicine? Yeah, well, doesn't matter. Kurt Cobain could have been gay as a, a $10 bill with fucking aliens coming out of his ass. I don't care. Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. There was a day where he's so gay was a slur. Doesn't matter. Be gay. Who cares? I certainly don't. Well, whatever. <laughs> of course, see, whatever. Be able to tell us themselves. How very convenient. Yeah, not only that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> God damn, it, she's yeah, pretty good. Pretty obvious they were trans. That might. Be mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Why Kurt's no longer with us. Maybe Kurt knew that we weren't ready. Or maybe one is just jump mm. jumping on that bandwagon of trying to say that. Any individual, especially those who are not here to speak for themselves, that did not fit into normal stereotypical <laughs> society roles, are trans. See, now, I would believe that Kurt Cobain's wife, uh, Courtney Love, I believe she'd be a tranny before Kurt Cobain. I, what do I know? That seems to be... What do I know? Oh, my God. I know nothing. Okay, where's, where are all the men? Did we see this one again? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Go ahead. This is the quickest way to clear out stuff. Oh, poop. fiber helps you put. Oh, goody. Because <laughs> after all, we all want to take a good dump. Poop, right? Nope. What about. You got to talk to Brandon. Brandon Trueblood has a secret because every time he goes to a Taco Bell, he blows it up. Drinking lots of water. Get up in there. Blow that fucking shit up. Yeah, come on. Where are the men that actually care about emotional connection? Well, oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go again. <laughs> Ah, uh, God. Why? Why do we torture ourselves with this bullshit? I don't know. Kurt killed me with teen spirit. <laughs> now I'm a man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I, I was on the uh, radio when Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. I think it was 1991. Late 1991. Man, that, that was a fucking earthquake, you know. That was that was a big change. Great song, too. Great band. I love them. <clears throat> and whether Kurt Cobain was gay or a tranny, who gives a shit? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You see, that's the problem with some of these folks, is that that's the only thing they have. I'm a this, and I'm a that. And I'm a that. And a really big. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we don't really care about that. Good for you. What, what else do you bring to the table? Oh, my God. You hate me. Uh, no. 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 But because you like a certain thing, 
we're expected to give you extra praise because you liked a certain thing. No, that's not the way it works. So sorry about well, the that. First place that some women should look. That are not sorry about that. Actually asking that question would be the friend zone. You know, that place that a lot of women put men that actually show them kindness, consideration, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Try looking there first. Like yes. where are the men that actually want to build something with their they're all around you. You just don't want to build anything with them, you stupid fucking cunt. Oh my god, is that mean? <laughs> nice Ray Bans. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And the yeah. second place that some of these men will be found will be sitting quietly in their homes, enjoying the peace and tranquility that comes with being mm -hmm. single. Like where? Where are they? One's not going to find them. Yeah. Yeah. Them up there. Because I don't Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, hmm, I wonder how many penises have been in that freaking hole. <laughs> Just, uh, gee, I don't know where all the good guys are. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, my God. Look at that. Aren't you getting all horned up, boys? <laughs> No, no, thank you. No. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's just like that. She looks like a toxic tiger lady from Thailand. That's long gone. Even did you get the alliteration there? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you did. Right? Toxic Thai lady from Thailand. <laughs> God, I just cracked myself up. Somebody has to. Oh, I, I know. It's, it's crazy. Completely fucking gone, apparently. Yeah. Because you keep picking men that don't give a shit about you, you stupid fuck. But blame all men because all men are evil. No, the men you keep picking are the Tyrones of the world. Gone. No, it's not. But a lot of women forget that part of mm. actually finding that connection would involve mm -hmm. listening to their partner, not just their partner having to listen to them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All they really care about is physical attraction and gaining physical That might be a large part due to a lot of women only being focused on a man's finances. I don't know what kind of world we're living in, but... Look, look sweetie, uh, girlfriend, <laughs> can, we, can we have a chat here? Men are attracted by the physical. I'm terribly fucking sorry. If you have a problem with that, talk to God. Okay. Go yell at Jesus for a while. That's the way we are. <laughs> I'm sorry. And the crazy thing is, like, she's going to say, or thinking in her head, ah, oh, these men, they, they just want hot women. When at the same time, they only want hot men. But it's okay, because she's a chick. Honestly, if she's not willing to connect on a mental spiritual... You can be shallow as long as you have a vagina. Okay, got it. Like, it's just not happening. I'm sorry. We are living in the kind of world that yeah. modern feminism has created. Mm, God, I know. I know, sweetheart. Oh, my God. All right, let's see what else we can scrape up off the Internet. <laughs> At 2 o'clock in the morning. All right. Kimber Pepper Blaster Review. All right, let's look at a chick doing something. We the Here we go. Of the United States. We've moved so far away from the Constitution that in many ways oh, we don't even recognize it. In order to form a more... Mm-hmm. Good morning, y'all. I'm Hannah Barron, and as a woman that travels a good bit by herself, oh, I feel yeah. like I always have some kind of protection with me. Usually that's my concealed carry, but that's not always... Usually it's a big old bag full of condoms. <laughs> Why are you like this? Man, she must be from Alabama. <laughs> She's from Alabama. Possible or legal. There's sometimes you can't always tow a pistol where you're going. Mm -hmm. So I have decided to try out the Pepper Blaster by Kimber. And we're going to test it out today. And See, I used to have something uh, with the name Kimber on it. it fell on a, <laughs> aliens came into my house one night and took it away. I don't know how to deal with that. Still dealing with the trauma. The trauma. <laughs> but I did have one. See how it works. At some point until the... Uh, 
And for anybody else that wants to try theirs out, I recommend you read through the read through little instruction manual and stuff in here. I mean, even these Southern girls, you know, they got all them nails. Oh my God! So you make sure you're not going to hurt yourself and get some. Of <laughs> That's a, probably a good idea. Yeah, I I would agree. Yeah, read the instructions. Stuff in your eyes because it will make you cough. As somebody that's been sprayed, will make you go crazy. Spray before. Make sure, make sure. Get up and get, get, get slap your grandma on Easter <laughs> if you don't read those instructions. You're doing it right. Hell yeah. Um, be careful. Maybe don't try this at home, but I'm about to. I mean, she's, she's you know, for a girl, she's she's got some she's got some guns over here. Whoa! What? <laughs> Stop it, you evil man! <laughs> How could you notice? I Come on. Now. This stuff before I put it to you, but uh, all right. I've got a Birchwood Casey Steel Target set up over there. And this thing says she's got some hooters there. Uh, Roger, I see the hooters. <laughs> It'll shoot 13 foot at 112 miles per hour. All right, so we're about to test it out. I'm gonna step out. Fucking a foot. Probably ain't right because I got little tiny feet. <laughs> we're gonna try it anyways. But you do have a nice belly button though. So, mm -mm -mm. stop it, hamster. You're an evil man. Because <laughs> you be. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Got my eye protection. Damn right, I do. Um, and I locked Merle up inside. And mm. you can probably hear him raising cane in the background because he hates. He's him. raising all kinds of cane there in the background. <laughs> oh my god, uh, that's got to be an Alabama girl, isn't it? He done it, done it. <laughs> She's American. Fuck yeah. <laughs> all right. By self. And before there we go. Somebody asked about my arm. It is June. It is. Yeah, what the hell happened to your arm? Prime catfish season. And oh, you're a catfish chick. Oh, my season. God. But She's one of those uh, <clears throat> people that go into the, uh, go into the swamp there and uh, pull them catfish out. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. While I'm home, I'm going to test this bad boy out. And I've got this on the front facing camera so I can see what's going on. So yeah. It has this flipped. But yeah, right. paper blaster by Kimber. And Kimber is actually um, located in my home state and the town where I went to college. And no shit. I thought Kimber was up in Connecticut. But, uh, okay. Whatever. In Troy, Alabama. So that's really cool. I guessed Alabama, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> Oh my God! Seems like you might know something. I know. Crazy. But y'all stay tuned. All right. This thing is pretty cool. I'm gonna show it to you. An Alabama girl here. Yep. So this is what the little doodad looks like. And she's got the scars to prove it. <laughs> the catfish. God damn. <laughs> and instead of like normal pepper spray. This one like shoots out there instead of you know having to get real close and personal. With somebody. I mean, what do they call that? Uh, <clears throat> there's a name for it where you go down with your arm and, you, and the catfish bites you and you pull it. There's there's a word for that. It's called crazy. <laughs> spray them. This thing will shoot you way out there, so you ain't got to be close yeah. to somebody to shoot them. You can get them before they get to you, and then you can take off. It's funny because you know, like uh, catfish are like prized. They're delicious, right? <clears throat> but I mean, carp or fish like that, same kind of fish, but the, oh, it's a carp. We can't do that. Yeah, carp's good. My daddy used to fry up carp for us. Oh my God, it was good. But maybe that's why we're just, <laughs> there's a possibility. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Little dude flips to the side so you can mm -hmm. pull the trigger. This is like the safety. Yeah, so yeah. We're about to test her out and shoot this target with it. Okay. Let's see how it goes. All right. Eight. All right. So I know this thing says 13 foot at 112 miles per hour, but I'm getting further back than that. Wait a minute. This is MGTOW Outlaw's cousin. <laughs> okay. I get it. I don't want to get sprayed with this stuff. Mm. I've also checked the wind direction. It's hitting me in the face right now, blowing towards the target away from me. Mm. So, yeah. If I miss, let's see what happens. Y'all don't judge me. Let's try this. We're not going to judge you at all. 
All right, so I might have took one practice shot with it just to make sure I wasn't going to make a fool out of myself. I mean, she is. She, oh, God. And, and on video, which, I mean, I didn't, but it would have been a funny video if I would have. Mm, but this mm. thing has two shots in it, too. The That's first it. time you shoot, it's like even with the safety. Okay. And then after you pull the trigger, it comes back a little bit so that you have a second shot. So you can shoot somebody twice or you shoot two people or whatever, which I will say I just... Mm -hmm. Just shot it out there and it the stuff stinks. So what, okay. Now <laughs> we're uh -huh. gonna do it on video. If I can get to where y'all can see me and the target here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't tip over. My okay. camera skills are awesome. Here we go. Okay. And with this, we're still Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The sticks I've got on the ground are 13 foot around it, so I'm probably... Okay. I don't know. I can't judge distance. I'm further than 13 foot here. But you can flip the uh, iron sight. Well, here's an idea there, sweetie. You could get a tape measure. <laughs> it's... Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Why are you such an asshole? <laughs> that's natural. That's why. Boom. What happened? Ooh. What did you? Okay. I can smell it. What does it smell like? I can smell it from here. Does it smell like Brandon's ass after a Taco Bell run? Is that I it? I will say that I shot high and it's still because I aimed it like the top of the target. Oh, yeah. And, and still, I saw most of it go over, oh. but it still soaked it. And I mean, is that, what it, is that what it does? Is it, it drenches it in blood-looking stuff? I mean, okay. I, I <laughs> Sure. Soaked okay. it. And that was so it. To make the, uh, the perpetrator think he's bleeding or something? Oh, hamster, you said the perpetrator. He. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, there's bad guys out there, guys. We know that. Like, I don't know, over 13 foot. It was a good ways away. Mm, it was a ways away. Way. Yeah, it was a ways away because, you know, my cousin was over there. And it makes me want to sneeze. But you, uh, what you, you, you bring it to the family reunion. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop it. Let the girl talk. Dude, just smelling it. Not it, and get any of it on me. Mm hmm. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. I can just smell it. Hang on. I'm going to turn mm. the camera around. Whoa. It looks like hot mm -hmm. sauce, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like uh, blood. <laughs> looks like you're trying to make the perpetrator believe that uh, he has been hit and killed with blood pouring out of him. Shark dentures. Hello. Hello, shark. Just fried. Her butt is fine. Yeah, she's got a nice hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't complain. Good to see you. All right, go on. I kind of wonder what it tastes like, but we're not gonna try it's that. Probably not good. You know. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And most of it went over it. You oh no! Out here in the grass, it looks like a darn blood trail for deer. <laughs> The uh, the Chaucer guys, he's all over this one. He's like, yeah, <laughs> give me some of that. <laughs> if y'all can see it, all the way out here. Yeah, Woo. I assume the idea is to make the perpetrator believe he's bleeding, thus to back off. Yeah, probably. That's pretty cool. Seems reasonable. Yeah. And I was, as you can tell, this little Birchwood Casey thing is well loved. But I was mm -hmm. back there by the tripod. I was back there by the tree. tripod. Oh, See, yeah. Pretty good little distance there. And we got stuff all the way up to here and probably further. I just, oh, yeah, right there, too. Pretty cool. Now, can you pull your rooters out and do it again? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So after a little product testing here, definitely recommend. I've actually already given one to my grandmother. 
and I'm about to give one to my mom and my stepmom too. But just I mean, the, the thing is, though, sweetheart, uh, if you're going to give someone a Kimber, uh, give them a Kimber. <laughs> poo 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 poo. Poo poo kachu. Oh my God. Go over everything. Pepper Blaster. It shoots pepper way out there. Pepper spray. Way the hell out of, there. Oh, know, yeah. When you're only like six it, inches from somebody. Right. Yeah, I just shot it at probably 30 feet. 16, 20 feet. 20 feet. Around that yeah, yeah, still yeah, yeah. Soak the target, even though I missed it with most of uh, Oh, yeah. I see those, those plants out there. You know what those are called? Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about that, but Mary Wana. Yeah, but it has a little safety thing here that you can out of the yes. side before yeah. you squeeze the trigger. It has two right. shots. The first time you shoot, the trigger will be up here, even with the safety. Mm. And then after you shoot the first time, it engages this bottom one here, and the trigger will be further back like this, so you know you have that safety. Oh, shot. and it looks just like hot sauce. Is this now, if anybody a... wants to volunteer for me to try it on a person, oh yeah, because I, I, I still need to conduct that experiment. Yeah, this is uh the, the one check. Two point two million views on this, guys. So let's see. Look, let's see. okay. We'll go to the catfish girl here. Same. You know, a lot of people think woman. that in order to conceal carry, you're oh, going to yeah. need a tactical belt and a mm -hmm. set of beads. Well, I'm here to tell you mm -hmm. that you don't. In fact, you can carry. In see, a... there's <laughs> there's fucking Google. Listening to what we're saying. Bathing yeah. suit, in a business suit, or in your birthday suit. Right. If you love to hunt, to fish, hell, oh. just to be out in the outdoors, you've probably heard of Alabama. Alabama, mama. Alabama, jamma. <laughs> Here you go, Chaucer. Who uh, yeah. <laughs> you even wore the Alabama? A social media nature influencer, Hannah Barron. She yeah. has completely taken the internet by storm. She has just captivated the audiences in that field, the nature in field. Oh, hell yeah. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. She has amassed a total of 1.5 million followers on Instagram, a total of 2.1 million followers on Instagram. I mean, she's rocking and rolling. Look at that. Oh, nice, nice, uh, nice cahooter. TikTok. Cahooter. She's even been dubbed the catfish girl. That's right, the catfish mm -hmm. girl. <laughs> because one of <laughs> her very first viral videos it might have been her very first viral video uh she brought out a monster when she went catfish. i mean that's a damn big catfish holy shit <laughs> jesus christ a catfish is the size of her oh my god it's noodling and ever since that's it's been noodling. canoodling is that what it's called canoodling yeah yeah i knew it had a name i did mita from Finland. Hello, Mita. Good to see you. Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Long time. Come on back when you can. We always love to hear from you, man. Good to see you. All right. Let's go back to the canoodler. The canoodler. The ca canoodling fishing person. Her nickname. So, yes. yeah, she's been known to do a little fishing, a little no. hunting, dropped a couple bucks. Oh, yeah. Fish noodling. Hell, she's even put down an elk. Hannah just has a passion for the outdoors, grew up mm -hmm. in this lifestyle. Hell, yep. she even helps her pops build homes. Hannah mm. has also really been a great role model for all women who enjoy the- And she's eminently fuckable. <laughs> just the Chaucerian friend says, or fraud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same things, really enjoy that outdoors lifestyle, the nature enthusiast, hunting, fishing, what have you. And quite frankly, I'd put her up against anybody else in that field. And outside yeah, of it- you, you would like to canoodle with this woman though, wouldn't you? <laughs> Chaucerian. Chaucerian. I think it's a reference to Chauc Chaucer, the author. Well, that's a, nice, that's a goddamn nice truck there, I'm telling you. That's a two-door Chevrolet. This whole That's social media thing city. that she's got going on, really, it seems as though she's a lovely lady and she came from good raisin. And so many other people oh, yeah. out there can see that as well because they came to her defense this week after she was <laughs> called out by another social media influencer over her accent and the way that she carries herself. Hey, and I'm not simping, Char. I'm just saying that uh, our friend here, 
in the chat. Chaucery and fraud likes a little bit of that, you know? That's say, hey, cool, whatever. The different things that she enjoys as hobbies. It's just been a really mm -hmm. wild mm -hmm. turn of events mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. these last couple of days for him. Yeah. So check yeah. this out. Here is that initial tweet that has sparked all of this conversation online, had Hannah trending on Twitter. Samira, as you can see here, who in her Twitter bio labels herself as foreign policy analyst, a news correspondent. She shared a video from Hannah's TikTok of her speaking. This video actually right here is Hannah helping her father build a, a home. But Samira's tweet reads, this accent needs to be illegal and women should be banned from doing manual labor like this. There is nothing feminine. Shinobi wants is too energetic and outgoing for me. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah, probably, probably, probably. About American women. American I mean, she can help you grow your ducks, though, man. She can help you with that. <laughs> she knows all that shit of it. That's this grill I quite like. <laughs> Jesus, Mia. Are you drinking again, sir? American women are literally men. Yeah, you, you can... <laughs> BS666. She looks like a walking wood chipper. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. I, I got to put that up. That, that's, that's a good comment. Thank you. <laughs> See how this sparks some outrage here. So for any of you guys who are not familiar with Hannah Barron, uh, I hope after this you go and follow her if you're interested in this. I mean, I've, I've been seeing this chick pop up all over the place with her catfishing and canoodling and whatever. Door stuff <laughs> because I'm telling you, she's really good at it and it's just fun to follow and watch her daily adventures. Let's take a look at that video, which was shared by Samira. But is she married yet? Or is she still finding herself? Finding herself. <laughs> Just asking the question. Where she was calling out Hannah for her Southern accent and the way she lives her life. Here's that video. Good morning, y'all. Quick update on the house, because I've been yeah. terrible about giving y'all these. Yeah, I remember this one. See, uh, <clears throat> what's interesting about this, <clears throat> in my humblest of opinions, who is building the house? <laughs> who is in there building the house? Just, uh, you know, whatever. Um, we took a little break for noodling season and to put out boxes. Now that it's dried in, we can do it at our own pace. But... Here she mm -hmm. is. We're going to stain all that wood a darker brown. And now, when you say we are going to stain it, you mean the men are going to stain it, sweetie, right? Not really you because it's screw up your, uh, your nail job, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yes. Yes, it would. And the shutters, when we get that on, we'll have handrails, of course. There's the carport over there. We run through. Now let's see all. Uh, let's count the uh, number of women in here building this house, guys. Let's see if we can find one. All these trusses are going to be exposed, and we're going to have mm -hmm. old ceiling. Mm -hmm. Got Daddy and Paul up there working on a wall. We're going to put up for the upstairs office. Mm -hmm. We. <laughs> she means you. <laughs> <laughs> And we got Def Leppard playing in the background, of course. Yes, we do. Back porch. It's the, uh, and then the walkway to the carport. Actually, I saw an uh, interview earlier today with Joe Elliott, who is the uh, <clears throat> lead singer of Def Leppard. Interesting man, you know, working class guy. And, yeah, he's the real deal. So if you don't like Def Leppard, well, you should, because otherwise you're, you're a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to be better about these, but you can also use my code Hannah twenty five for twenty five. Shinobi Wan Kenobi says the log house is built with dildos. Yes, why it looks so shaky? Well, maybe she they let her put on a couple of a couple of freaking uh, two by fours. Who knows? Hope y'all have a good one. Appreciate y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I could listen to her talk all day long and mm. quite frankly again her content is great yep. and good for her for getting out there yeah, and being a nature enthusiast and fishing and hunting and doing what she loves to do why would anyone want to bash someone for doing what it is that they love i'm a fishing 
had a work in to do. But again, hunting, oh my God, it was just so outrageous. And so many folks have come to her defense again. Even Jelly Roll has come to her defense. Yeah, I, I know me to up in Finland. You, you know, you have to build your shit the last because the, the, the entire world is against uh, Finland with the nature and the and the Russians. Yeah, yeah. Folks, yeah. Here are just some of those tweets of people responding to that initial. Not like other grills. <laughs> God damn it. Mita, you are the star of this show. I'm telling you. Well, tweet there on X from Samira. One wrote, jealous, LOL. Most guys would rather have a girl like this than some girly, wimpy princess. Another adds, uh, sorry, but uh, this is like a dream woman. Another adds, mm -hmm. women who talk like this and can do things like this are too busy being satisfied. To She's too popular to be a wife. Oh, my God, Shinobi. You can't even charge your goddamn cell phone. So, I mean, she could probably do that and, and get catfish for you and help the ducks and, you know, slay a few kangaroos. <laughs> She's one of those. Tomboy type. Filled you know. and love to care about some rando with an X account. This female user writes, cute Southern girl who doesn't need fake lips and a metric ton of makeup to be attractive. Mm -hmm. She's also very productive. Someone is raging with jealousy. To go There's something to be said about that, you know. I mean, she's not wearing a face full of shit and got nails that you can't wipe your ass with. Ah, okay. All right. Through all of the comments defending yes. Hannah would probably take me about 10 more videos to do. Like I said, she's had... A lot of people in her corner, folks have just been coming to her defense. And mm -hmm. really, it's been nice to see people jump in and, and take take up for her. Jelly Roll's response and comments came from this initial tweet here from user Benjamin the Cracker, who says that he is a software developer, programmer, software engineer, creator of Final Frame AI. He right. tweeted out, okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Biblical prophecy. <laughs> Can we do this one? Drinking coffee every day didn't yes. work for me. That looks I like Russian. I couldn't figure out why until I went from 184 to 123. I was mm -hmm. doing everything right. I just needed a little tweak to one thing. A so little this tweak. Is a simple method that has helped me drop close to 61 pounds. Okay, Mita. <laughs> the, the end Imagine of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. But you are standing in an ancient quiet forest right where every tree and plant seems to stand in uh, hushed anticipation but ironically is this is the daily jesus channel so in the cool <laughs> right. still air you suddenly notice a single leaf i would agree chaucerian fraud that's right trembling it's not moved by the wind but by something deeper Oh, a vibration okay. running through the ground itself, heralding a change. Is it a 432 hertz thing? This forest is our world. Okay. And that vibrating leaf, it's like the coming solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024. Oh my God, it's Monday. What are we going to do? <laughs> How do we prepare for it? Now, I'm sorry, Mita, you're not going to see it in Finland. You might see a partial, but I've seen with my own ball, God damn eyeball. That's right. My damn eyeballs. I think four or five solar eclipses. I haven't seen a total one yet. And I probably won't see a total one tomorrow or Monday. Well, let's see. There was an eclipse in the early seventies. I saw, but the ones I really remember when I was like a, a teenager, there was a partial solar eclipse in February 1979. Saw that one. There was a partial solar eclipse December 25th, 2000. There was a partial solar eclipse where I was in Arizona uh, in uh, seven years ago. And there will be an eclipse Monday. That's four. <laughs> I've seen four of them, and the, the well, Jesus hasn't come yet. So, yeah, I believe I, I believe that Chaucerian fraud. Yeah, well, we're going to see most of it here in St. Louis. We're not going to get the whole thing, 
If I drove two hours south of here, we might get a, a totalitarian, totalitarianism. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. There's going to be so many people and all the fucking traffic. I think I'm just going to sit here and do it. Take some pictures. It'll be fine. Now, however, <clears throat> the next total solar eclipse in the United States will be 2044. So, since I'm 60, I could still be alive in 20, 2044. But, uh, well, whatever. It's fine. We'll see. Go ahead. Just as the leaf signals a shift in the unseen depths, so too does this eclipse signify a profound shift in the spirit. I mean, the, the Aussies uh, and, and Shinobi Wan Kenobi, you're going to miss the whole thing, man. <laughs> you did, you just, you're not going to see it. Actual landscape. Yes. For some of us, the solar eclipse is merely a fleeting marvel or an ordinary natural event mm. it may be dismissed as a mere astronomical occurrence mm -hmm. however for those with spiritual insight it represents a momentous shift a divine signal of change in the spiritual realm that invites yeah lanny says the comet could still hit any time until 2040 yeah I mean, you know, what's crazy, and I know a lot of you guys are younger guys, right? 20s and 30s. It's like, Jesus Christ, I'm 60. So if by chance <clears throat> I happen to live, you know, another 40 years, 2064, <laughs> imagine that. That's fucking crazy. Although I heard, uh, I read today, actually. That there was, I think it was a World War II guy or somebody, you know, 103, 104 years old. It's like, what the fuck? Imagine that. Wow. Go ahead. It's just to look beyond the temporal and into the eternal narrative that is being woven by our mm. creator. Yes. Today, I will uncover the layers of meaning behind the solar eclipse of 2024. Mm -hmm. A phenomenon that intertwines celestial movements with biblical prophecy. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you. Chaucer and fraud says, I'm 36. The meteor can come any day now. <laughs> well, you know, a little bit of a little bit of Jesus these days would probably be helpful. You know, with all the crazy shit going on. Kind of reset and get back to something that re resembles uh, uh, normal. Would be good. Go ahead. You, in the mighty name of Jesus. So yes. watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you a preview. Uh, the idea in the Bible that there's going to be an eclipse during these things and what the da. And so eh, Jesus coming back. Well, maybe. My friends, since the beginning of time. God has communicated with humanity through the patterns and events in the sky. Chaos, it's always good when you show up. Thank you, <laughs> sir. It's always good when you're here, Chaos. Welcome. As we turn to Genesis 1, verse 14, we're reminded that God placed lights in the sky, not only to illuminate, mm -hmm. but also to signal divine appointments. Right. The scripture tells us, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night yep. and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Here, the word seasons is not a reference to our four annual quarters of spring, mm. summer, fall, or winter. Instead, it is a reference to God's appointed times a schedule of holy significance. Right, right. Indeed, these celestial signs have been present at pivotal moments throughout history, serving as harbingers of monumental shifts. Mm -hmm. Consider the words of Luke 21. Yes. Verse 25, where it speaks of signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and how upon the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. 
Such events in the heavens are not merely for our wonder, but for our awareness, guiding us to understand the deeper meanings behind these cosmic occurrences. My friends, mm -hmm. let us seek to understand the significance of this event through the lens of the Bible, the connection between celestial occurrences and prophetic events brings light to God's mastery over creation and time. I mean, I think the, uh, the eclipse I saw, December 25th, <laughs> 2000, kind of a big deal. You know, that was kind of Christmas Day. You know, where's the Jesus? Ah, Jesus didn't show up. <laughs> well, maybe this one is going to be the Jesus. Maybe he'll show up today. Who knows? Solar eclipses are mentioned throughout the scripture, often in the context of impending change or judgment. For instance, Amos 8, verse 9 states, mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. This passage makes clear reference to an eclipse symbolizing God's sovereignty over nature and a reminder of his though, presence in the midst me. of human history. The thing is, you know, when when you were ancient, you know, hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago, when you didn't understand that the moon and the sun getting in front of each other, they, they, you know, they were sacrificing virgins and all that stuff. It was kind of a big deal, you know, kind of a big deal. And, you know, I, I think Monday is going to be a big deal. You know, it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a life-changing event, but it's certainly something that you don't see every day, <laughs> right? Yeah. It alerts us to the fact that God intervenes in the world in significant ways, yeah. urging us to take yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I think God kind of set it in motion and... He left us to, okay, you guys figure it out. I mean, if, if <clears throat> excuse me, if God intervened in the day, every day, there'd be no kids starving or dying of cancer. I think God just kind of started it to hit the button, and here we are. Not that God isn't there. It's just God doesn't intervene all the time. He's kind of sitting it out. <laughs> He's on the... He's on the side, like the he's a he's a bench warmer at this point. So like I gave you all this stuff. I said, let there be light, all that. Yes, I did that. But uh, you guys kind of have to figure it out on your own. Uh, maybe we're just a weird experiment. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> I don't know. But if God every day came to this earth. And he, he obviously knows everything. Uh, why would there be kids dying of cancer? Doesn't really make sense, does it? Oh, but you have to go through the hardship to get to the kingdom of heaven. But kids? Kids with cancer? Why? They're, they're children. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, but you don't know the whole mind of God because you could never know that. Because you're you're not God, fair. But if God intervenes every day, why would they read people starving? Doesn't make sense. Go on. Heed and prepare for His divine actions. Therefore, we need to understand that this eclipse is not merely a natural spectacle. It holds a mirror to the past and a window to the future, framed mm. by the word of God. You know, it's interesting, though, that the, uh, the moon, our moon, happens to be just about the right size to <laughs> cover the entire sun. Isn't that fucking weird? You suppose that's a coincidence, guys? <laughs> just, just say it. It is a divine marker, signaling significant shifts and fulfilling ancient prophecies. Let's proceed by examining the intricacies of God's calendar, which differs vastly from our modern-day Gregorian calendar. Introducing the Claudener Seat Cushion, a revolutionary cushion that will transform your sitting experience. People everywhere... Yeah, that's nice, but kids with cancer. 
If God intervenes in our little lives here on this insignificant planet in an insignificant freaking galaxy in this universe, if God says, yeah, yeah, I'm coming, why do kids get cancer? Why do people die of starvation? On this great big blue planet of ours. Why? Doesn't make sense. Does the biblical calendar is not merely a way to mark time, but a divine instrument tuned to the rhythm of prophecy and redemption. To gain further insight, let's turn to the book of Leviticus, where chapter 23 introduces us. Chaucerian God said, fraud, I have a buddy who might say 36, stage four brain cancer. Why? Why does God make us suffer? I mean, this could be a whole theological thing we could talk about. But if God is all-knowing, all-loving, and cares about us, and knows us from the hairs on our head and before we're even born, and he loves us. Why would he inflict this pain upon us? Why? I think it's a good question. As to God's appointed times, these appointed times, or mudim, are sacred appointments between God and humanity, designed for remembrance and worship, each with prophetic significance. In Leviticus 23, verse 2, the Lord speaks to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. My friends, understand that it's crucial for believers to understand the significance of these feasts, especially as we seek to interpret the signs of the times in light of biblical prophecy. These feasts include <clears throat> Passover, commemorating liberation from bondage, mm. and the Feast of... I mean, that's a fair point, Chaos. God doesn't make us suffer. We make us suffer. But the kids with cancer, though, how does that make sense? Johnny Midnight is here. Hello. God may not help your hemis, but close we should best <laughs> can't even read it. All right, Johnny, good to see you, man. Why? Kids with cancer. Doesn't it makes no sense. You know, if you smoked your whole life, you knew the uh, thing going in, hey, you smoke, you're probably gonna die of lung cancer. Okay, you made your choice. But kids who haven't done anything, why? If God is great, Jesus is our Savior, all that stuff, why? Why do kids get cancer? Makes no sense. Go on. Tabernacles celebrating God's provision and presence. Besides Passover and Feast of Tabernacles, the biblical calendar also features the Feast of Unleavened Bread, highlighting purity and haste in leaving Egypt. There is also the Feast of First Fruits, mm -hmm. celebrating the initial harvest, pointing yes. to Christ's resurrection. Also, there is the Pentecost, mm -hmm. commemorating the giving of the Torah and the descent of the Holy Spirit. Then there is the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, calling for reflection and repentance, and the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, a solemn time for atonement and reconciliation right. with God. These feasts collectively underscore the narrative of liberation, provision, repentance, and divine presence in the journey of faith. They frame the past deliverances, 
and future fulfillments of God's plan for humanity. The solar eclipse, as a sign in the heavens, falls into this divine structure of timekeeping, acting as a celestial harbinger. That yeah, Chaucerian friend, yeah. Yeah, in the, mm, I hear you. You know, I think God gave us the ability to find solutions to problems, right? You know, vaccines, uh, operations, whatever. But really only in the last hundred years, you know, if you think about that, how old is the, is the planet, you know, billions of years old or 6,000 years old, if you believe in the creation, you know, the theory, only in the last hundred years, really, have we found the ways to deal with stuff, right? I mean, it was 120 years ago. 120 years ago that we figured out how to fucking fly a plane. <laughs> That's like not even a fucking blip in the eye of the fucking, you know, of history, of time. It's nothing. So what, what were humans doing for thousands of years before that? Building pyramids, yeah, that's cool. But why didn't they figure it out? You know, early modern humans were not any more stupid than we are. So why didn't they do that? Huh. I bet it was aliens. <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens, but, you know, it was aliens. Oh, my God, look who's here. Godfather of Ramadi, go! Calls our attention to God's unfolding plan. As we think about the coming eclipse, mm -hmm. we cannot help but reflect on past events right, where right. darkness fell upon the earth during mm -hmm. critical moments in yes. biblical history. The crucifixion yes. of Jesus, for instance, was marked by darkness covering the land, an event documented in Matthew 27, verse 45, which reads now from... Jersey the whore horse is here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good to see you, Jersey. Uh, wait, it's Jerry the Warhorse. Hey, Jerry, good to see you, man. Now, here's a deal that I've always wondered about. Being, you know, growing up a Catholic, Catholic school, all that, you know, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all that stuff. They say that Jesus rose three days after he was crucified. So, let's see now. He was crucified on Good Friday. Well, Easter Sunday is two days. So it's one of those things. Just say it. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Mm -hmm. This alignment of a natural phenomenon with a moment of profound spiritual significance illustrates the harmony between heaven and earth yep. in God's orchestration of redemption. Now, let us also consider the Gog Magog War and its possible connection with this 2024 right. solar eclipse. Right. This prophetic right. battle was mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. The Gog Magog War is described as a pivotal conflict. Involved Actually, I kind of like that. Jerry the War Horse. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a great name. I love that. Johnny Midnight. Let's see who else is here. All right, let's go on with this for a bit. I have one more beer. Involving nations from the north descending upon Israel in the end times. Mm -hmm. The occurrence of rare solar eclipses in our time, including the one set for 2024, may well be the celestial signals that align with these times of warfare and change. When we consider the Gog there will be wars and rumor of wars and eclipses and shit like that. Is Jesus coming back? <laughs> I mean, what, what would you do? You know, I mean, just normal, average guys, men and women. And you, 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 you say you go into an olive garden and it's like, I am Jesus, the Lord, the Messiah. <laughs> what? What would we say? It's like, okay, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll get you a dinner. Uh, yes, it's just, clearly you've got some problems. 
What would we do if Jesus came down? Mita in Finland, right? Swomi. I am Jesus. I am the Son of God. I'm here to save you. What what would we say? We'd probably go, ah, that's bullshit, wouldn't we? Probably. The Magog War, in light of this, we see a pattern emerging. Celestial signs often accompany times of great change or turmoil. As we gaze into the prophetic scriptures, like Ezekiel 38 and uh, 39. But I mean, you know, remember, Chaucerian fraud. Watch the documentary about the age of Sumerians recently suggest their civilization a massive dust storm. Eh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. 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 You mental. <laughs> what? what are you saying? So, Which so detail this end time anymore. conflict. Of course I we am. We are reminded that God's signals in the heavens are not random, but are part of a divine strategy to alert his people. Uh -huh. Yeah. These signs urge us to take action, engage in prayer, and prepare ourselves spiritually. Interestingly, these elements form the acronym AP. So, just as we live in an era dominated by digital applications or apps, let's embrace the spiritual app, action, prayer, and preparation, reminding us to actively respond to God's call in these times. Mm. As we continue to watch and pray, we remember the words in 2 Peter 3, verse 8, where we're reminded that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years. Yes, yes, Mita. Uh, <laughs> we have Olive Garden in the United States, and it's unlimited breadsticks <laughs> and unlimited soup. It's great. And salad and shit. Oh my God, it's great. I like a day. The Lord's perception of time invites us to consider the broader picture of God's eternal plan. Just as the Israelites were to observe the signs and seasons, so too must we discern the times we live in. In this context, the solar eclipse of 2024 is not an isolated celestial event. Mm. but a piece in a larger prophetic puzzle. As we navigate through these times, we draw upon the wisdom of Scripture to guide our understanding. Let us take heed of the lessons learned from biblical history and prophecy, using them as a lens to interpret the signs of our times, including the upcoming eclipse. Yeah, the thing, uh, Chaucian, the thing about uh, Jesus going on TikTok, he didn't have to do that. He's God. <laughs> so he wouldn't have to, right? He could just heal the sick, the kids with cancer, all that. Just snap his fingers. All you have to do is touch his robe. Everything is done. And yet here we are. <laughs> so we have God who loves us cares about us yet we still have kids with cancer that doesn't make sense why make the kids suffer well it'll make them better people what but they're they're, they're gonna die <laughs> it, it's it's silly i'm not saying i don't believe in god and jesus don't don't get me wrong here but seems to me there might be some intervention that we could have to help the kids with cancer or prevent a woman from getting raped, or something like that. Where, where's God? Where's that? Or prevent a car accident. You know, a bunch of, a family in a car gets freaking killed because they run into something. It's a little weird to me. I mean, God is all-powerful. And God can do whatever the hell he wants to do, why is it he doesn't do that? I think it's a good question. You know, why? Now, consider the book of Joel, which provides a stark portrayal of the day of the Lord, uh -huh. a time of darkness, 
the book of Joel. I don't think there's a book of Joel in the Bible. But even if there were a book of Joel in the Bible, how can you explain to me, like, you know, Catholic priests and theologians, why do kids get cancer? That's it. It makes no sense. God can intervene. Jesus can come down and heal these kids. But we don't see that. But on the other side of that, maybe Jesus and God heals most of the kids from getting cancer. There's a few that, you know, get through the cracks and, and they suffer this horrible shit. But maybe we're looking at it from the wrong side. You know? Maybe most kids don't get cancer because God. Maybe. Both literal and spiritual. Joel 2, verse 31 tells us. Not sure about the sun Joel. shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood I still before don't... the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. This prophetic utterance also underscores the dual role of solar and lunar eclipses as harbingers of God's sovereign intervention in human affairs. In other words, it highlights the cosmic signs that precede significant divine intervention. Hey, Mita. Uh, <clears throat> we're doing a uh, stream tomorrow at four o'clock central or today. If you can come by Brandon's Brandon's channel, we're going to talk about shit. I would love to have you there. That'd be great. Mentions yeah, urging us to remain vigilant, and prepared for the unfolding of God's redemptive plan mm. in times past during an eclipse. Okay. Mita. People often experience you can. a deep sense of wonder and fear recognizing the extraordinary power and mystery of God. This profound reaction to the breathtaking spectacle of an eclipse is likely to be shared by many today, bridging the gap across time with those ancient observers in a show. I mean, isn't... Okay. Mm. Again, I'm getting all theosophical here. But let's say, okay, let's say Jesus and God, or Allah, or Yahweh, or whoever your God is, they prevent most kids from getting cancer. Okay, good. But God being the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-overarching power in the universe, who knows everything, who sees everything, Jesus, his son, our Lord and Savior, how could they miss some kids? Though? How, how is that? Hmm. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Just saying, maybe the fact that most kids don't get cancer is the evidence of God, but why do some kids get cancer? Seems odd to me. How could God, all-knowing and all-being, all-knowing everything? Hmm. Mm hmm. There are questions, aren't there? Shared sense of astonishment and reverence. Why you should drink warm salt water if you're dealing with high blood sugar levels. Did you know that high sugar levels may have little to do with the... Now, this reaction was not born out of superstition, but stemmed from an understanding that such phenomena were messages from God. In Luke 21 verse 11... Mm. Jesus himself speaks of great signs from heaven among the indicators of his return. Okay. The darkening of the sun is then a celestial signal, a pause in the heavens, calling all creation to attention. Yep. To discern the message behind these cosmic signs, we turn to the patterns laid out in scripture. Biblical accounts often link eclipses with pivotal moments of judgment or deliverance. The ninth plague of darkness over Egypt. Descri <clears throat> That's a fair point, Mita. To be better. Yes, but God tells us 
<laughs> you know, I don't want you to. It, it, uh, hmm. It's really a conundrum. I'm no expert on theology, but uh, seems to me if God loves us, there wouldn't be any suffering. <laughs> but maybe as the Gnostics and the uh, some other sects of Christianity uh, have said, maybe this is actually hell. The fact that you're here on earth means you're living through hell. I don't mean earth is pretty good. I like it. But for some people, again, the kids with cancer, why? Doesn't make any sense. Described in Exodus 10, verses 21 to 23, brought a tangible darkness that could be felt, a precursor to the deliverance of Israel. In a similar vein, the solar eclipse serves as a physical manifestation of spiritual realities, a tangible reminder of the invisible truths that govern our existence. The path of the 2024 eclipse across the United States has stirred much contemplation and speculation. This path, intersecting with the 2017 eclipse, forms a giant X over the nation. Some interpret the X, formed by the eclipse paths as a prophetic sign and a mark of divine significance. The intersection point, known as Little Egypt, a region in the United States with historical ties to ancient civilizations, serves as a focal point in this interpretation. Yeah, I don't think the eclipse goes through Cairo, <laughs> Illinois. It might. Go ahead. This area, symbolically linked to Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is thought to emphasize a message of reconciliation and divine presence. My friends, let such an intersection prompt us uh -huh. to reflect on Isaiah 55, verse 6, mm -hmm. which urges us to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. In my opinion, these celestial crosses in the sky can be viewed as a call to a nation to seek repentance and return to the ways of the Lord. I mean, look at our Muslim friends, right? They're Muslim guys. They're like, the only way to get to heaven is to kill yourself. What? <laughs> I mean, think about that. Why would a loving God expect you to do that? That's it's crazy. It's uh, probably a <laughs> we could probably have a long stream on that. Furthermore, the eclipse's trajectory through various cities in the United States named Salem, a name mm -hmm. derived from Shalom. Yeah, here's the here's the, here's the yes invokes the presence Shalom. of Christ, yeah, yeah. Right. the Prince of Peace. This symbolism is reminiscent of Hebrews seven, verse two, which refers to Melchizedek, the King of Salem, as the King of Peace. So the journey of the eclipse through places. Well, I, Jerry, Jerry, the the the, the horse. horse. <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning. You know, quick trip, Mike, have some beers, but I'm not going out. Of my son, <laughs> no. Well, I'll have to get you tomorrow because uh, right now I'm not going to be driving anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Bearing yeah. this name could be seen as a signpost pointing toward the need for spiritual peace and reconciliation. As we observe the uh, movements of the heavens, we right, must not become right. passive spectators, but active participants in God's redemptive history. The Apostle Paul in Romans 13, verse 11, exhorts believers to awaken from slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. My friends, the eclipse is yet another wake-up call, a reminder to live in a manner worthy of our calling, vigilant and prepared for the Lord's coming. Yeah. In the same breath, we recall the story of the wise and foolish virgins in Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Again, I, I you know, I, I, I hate to beat the, I hate to beat the dead horse, but if we ran into Jesus at a cafe or a Starbucks, would we know him? 
Or would we say he was a crazy person? I'm, I'm the son of God. I'm here to redeem you. What would we say? We go, oh, okay. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're Jesus. Great. Yeah, I got it. Got it. The wise virgins with their lamps filled with oil were ready for the bridegroom's arrival. In contrast, the foolish were unprepared, their lamps empty. The 2024 solar eclipse challenges us to be like the wise virgins, filled with the spirit and ready for the return of Christ. Yeah. Uh, uh, me too. Yeah. Family first. Exactly. You know, take care of your family, you know, pray to God and help your neighbors too. Right. That's what we used to do. You know, I mean, look, <laughs> we can look at the, uh, the Finns who, you know, the Russians, all that stuff. Take care of your family first, right? Pray to God. And hopefully everything's going to work out. Our bright. But if God is all powerful, <laughs> why wouldn't it work out for the good? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it don't, man. Why? To make us suffer before we get to heaven? Groom. Yet, we must approach these signs with a spirit of discernment. While some may be tempted to interpret every celestial event as a prophetic milestone, we are reminded in 1 John 4, verse 1, to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. It is crucial to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance to understand the times and not be led astray by every wind of doctrine or speculation. We are called to look beyond the physical explanations and see the spiritual dimension. Just as... Yep. I, I, I totally agree, Mita. Yep. Absolutely agree. Jesus taught in parables, using everyday occurrences to convey deeper truths, so too can we discern spiritual lessons in natural phenomena. The solar eclipse invites us to reflect on our spiritual state, to consider whether we are living in the light of Christ or in the shadow of worldly concerns. It's a moment to consider our ways, to evaluate our paths, and to seek a closer walk with God. As we stand in the awe, inspiring shadow of the eclipse, let us lift our eyes to the heavens and our hearts to the Lord, seeking God's face and his will for our lives. Let us ponder the words of Psalm 19, verse 1, which says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. My friends, the upcoming solar eclipse is mm -hmm. yet another verse in the celestial psalm of creation, yeah, a testament yeah, yeah. to the majesty and mystery of our Creator. So, as we turn our gaze skyward to the impending eclipse, we should consider it as a divine appointment, a scheduled moment in which heaven intersects with earth. In this celestial event, we are invited to witness a physical manifestation of God's timing and purpose a reminder that he orchestrates the universe in a dance of divine precision and significance. In the heart of every believer, there should be an expectation that God is actively involved in the affairs of humanity and that he uses the celestial bodies as instruments for his purposes. The psalmist declared in Psalm 104, verse 19, he appointed... Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I did. Hmm. I suppose that's the faith bit, right? You have faith in God, Jesus, Allah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Pointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. This verse reveals that the movements of the celestial bodies are not random. They are divinely appointed for signs and for seasons, 
for days and years. As we examine the profound timing of the 2024 solar eclipse, it is intriguing to draw parallels with significant events in the Bible where darkness played a crucial role. As mentioned earlier, we cannot overlook the three hours of darkness that covered the land during the crucifixion of Jesus, a moment that marked the turning point of human history. There's one simple 20-second rub ritual that anyone can do that relieves 90% of back pain for weeks. Did you know that you can naturally eliminate back and joint pain without addictive painkillers or resorting to high-risk surgery? New research has found that 90% of back pain cases are caused by a group of highly toxic chemicals released by your very own body, which are very aggressive and almost immune to all known current popular treatments. Did, you, did, did he say a 20-second rub out? <laughs> all right, boys. We are going to gather again tomorrow, today, actually in, in 13 hours, <laughs> Brandon Trueblood, live stream. You guys have a wonderful night. God bless whether you believe in God or not. And I'm starting to wonder about that. But uh, anyway, you take care. Good to see you. God bless, brothers. Take care. Bye-bye.